Mark predominantly moves it right to left, and once it gets up in the wind and you've got it going right to left, that brings that left bunker into play. Now it just depends on the lie. Has a lot of green to work with and back into the wind, but we haven't seen many up and downs from there. Kevin Sutherland, five under on his round today. That is a round of golf in these conditions. Well, and I like this play right here. Uh, when I obviously play here a lot, and I like to hit driver off here, and the only miss really that's a poor miss today would be to the right. If you miss it left, you have a shot. I love driver. It takes the bunker out. I do too, Kurt. I'm glad you said that. And the only thing is you're longer than even Kevin Sutherland, so those bunkers aren't even a thought for you. Yeah, that's just ideal right there is all. That's perfect. Whole location, the right front, so anywhere in the center of the fairway or left, like Kurt said, you had a play. Freddie Couples took a run at the 18th and put it in the back bunker. This is his third. Should release back down grain downwind. Look Trying to. What a shot. Look at this. That's just kind of average for Fred. Couples will have that for birdie as we go back to 15. And Brant Joe. Couple bogeys with a birdie. That was a solid strike right behind the golf hole. Beautiful shot right there. Bogey at number one, unfortunately. Bad start for Brant, but battling back. West Short coming up short with his third at 18. This is for birdie. Would have thought he'd had enough firepower to get to the screen in two easily. Must not have hit a pretty good, a very good tee shot. Or third, if this is his birdie attempt. Trying to make this go left. Don't think it's going that much. He's got some work left. He's going to be outside of Fred Couples for a par putt. Short two wins on the PGA Tour champions, most recent last year in Calgary at the Shaw Charity Classic. Looking forward to getting back to Calgary. That's a pretty cool venue. And he's going to go ahead and try to finish this up for a par. I think there's much in this, maybe left center. That's where you hit it. Showed Fred the line. It's a good round, 66. Eight under. In these conditions, that's an excellent round today. It really is. There are not many better than that. And West Short does drive it and, and plays it on the line, so wind's not going to affect his ball flight as much as some. Woody struggled for a couple of weeks. Glad to see him back playing a little better this week. Birdie at the last for Woody Austin to get to six under par. Five shots off the lead of Sutherland. And if it blows tomorrow, Whit, I mean, if it blows anywhere near this tomorrow, five, five back is in play. Five shots back is not too much if the wind blows. Right now, 10 players are within five shots of the lead. Fred goes left hand low, like that. Able to sneak that one in. Even par round of 71 for couples. West short at eight under, three off the lead, 66 to. Golf now, go play.
Kevin Sutherland with the familiar step in at the 16th. Boy, 78 yards, good yardage here. Should still be able to spin it and flight it down just a little bit with this wind blowing. Nice swing right there, good rotation. Oh yeah, that was gorgeous. What a great little swing that was, Kurt. It certainly was crispy. It was, take a look at the contact here. It obviously has to be spot on. Catches ball first, then a little bit of Phoenix Country Club and he'll replace the divot, but that was really well done. Good strike. Love the small swing. I love the rotation through the ball. That's what held that on line so well. And back to 15, we saw that beautiful tee shot of Brant Job. Now back down the hill, little too much respect. That can get away from you. Steve Flesh in the fairway at the 18th. He's a two under, that was his third, and he'll have that for birdie. I thought it was a pretty good shot. Steve didn't like it. Hmm. His standards are pretty high. Broadhurst playing from the bunker here. Kind of the short bunker. This is not a good place to be right here for Brody. That's an awkward length shot. Pretty well done. Uh, getting it in there inside 20 feet or so from that bunker, I, I think I'd be happy with it. Not bad. A lot of stuff up around that green. Water, other bunkers. Obviously a very poor layup by Brody. To the tee at 16 for Brant Job with TrackMan Tracer technology. And going with driver here today, which I think is a better play yesterday. He hit iron, had 160 yards into this green. Big mistake. Now he's got just a little wedge. Much more aggressive play. Now he's thinking birdie. Paul Goidos has played 12 rounds here. Nine of them have been in the 60s. In the last three years of this event, T10, 7th, and T9. You kind of feel like he's due to win one of these. He obviously likes this golf course. One of the reasons he plays so well with, he drives it in the fairway. Really straight hitter of the ball. Leaves himself a lot of mid and short irons, and he can be a very good putter. Nice shot there. Good angle at that front right hole location. Goido's plus two on his round today, though. Made bogey back at 15. Trying to get one back at 16. And we go to 18. This was a moment ago. Third shot for Mike Weir. Well, he's got enough firepower to get there in two, so he got it hole high, and nice little bunker shot there by Mike. Good way to finish. Simple little birdie. And now we'll come back live with this group, Paul Broadhurst. Safety first out of that short bunker. Put it in the fat part of the green. This is for birdie. Really had a nice round going through 15 holes was five under for the day, then bogeyed 16 and 17. So two not good bogeys at all there by Brody. Would love to finish up with a birdie here. Still gonna be in good position. Unless Kevin Sutherland just keeps going crazy. Work back to the right. Just had to hit it. You could say he lost three shots the last three holes, that being a, a birdie hole at 18. Still around at 68. He's tied for third. Currently four back of Kevin Sutherland, but that could change right now. This is for birdie. It should change. There's not much here. It's 
Sutherland gets to 12 under. That's quite a round he's got going on today. Only one. Go back to the 18th, and Mike Weir will have this for birdie. Trying to get to seven under. That would tie him with Broadhurst. And Tom Lehman, who's in at seven under. Also puts Weir in a position that a low round tomorrow and playing in front of the leaders, he can get their attention. Go post a little 65 tomorrow from where he is and enjoy the show. Pick up Kevin Sutherland going from 16 green to 17 T. A little longer walk than it was last year as they've added about 30 yards to this beautiful dogleg left par four. Cookie, they've really forced guys. If you have length, you can still go down the left side. If you're not a long hitter, you have to play out to the right or you're going to get blocked out on that corner. Especially a day like today where the wind now has switched to be back in and out of the left off the tee. You see that second deck right there? That was the original tee. They added one back there a good 30 yards. You really have to pay attention now. They did a great job with these. You know, we talked about it, the crew out here, the superintendent and his crew did such a good job getting these tees. They flattened out a bunch of them. Some of them had gotten crowned over the years. And these new tees, they came in great. A tough shot, though. Back into the wind, out of the left. If you lose it a little bit, it starts riding that wind. It'll end up in the bunker. 285 to that bunker on the right. Yeah, this is right up the heart of the fairway. He is really in control of his golf swing right now. When he stays in control of that golf swing, he can hit it solid. Final PGA Tour Champions event in calendar year 2020. The season will continue in 2021. And fingers crossed, we'll be able to hand out the Charles Schwab Cup right here in Phoenix at this time, one year from now. Brent Job has been stalking this one for a while. Well, he has, and uh, not the best second shot in here. Got away from a little bit, a little bit deep. Back down the hill. Downhill, down grain. Got to be a little concerned with the speed. I don't think he's coming back that much. Nope. Either a real bad putt or an awful read. One of the two. <laughs> The sun is back out here in Phoenix, but the temperatures are dropping, and this was expected. We were told it was going to be colder on the weekend here. It was very, very warm earlier in the week. This weather has been, this front has been moving through throughout the course of the day. Yeah, it, go, it goes all the way down to 50 degrees uh, by tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, so... All the way down to 50 degrees uh, by tomorrow morning. Seven. And the cool weather went, drives the greens out even more. So if they maintain the cut they have now, look for 13 on the step meter to be closer to 14 by tomorrow. Would you say, Cookie? Absolutely. The sun's out right now. Wind's blowing. It'll dry these uh, beautiful champion Bermuda greens out. I'm sure the players are thrilled to hear that. The guys playing good are, yeah. <laughs> if you're playing really well, you want the conditions to be right at their peak. You don't want anybody coming to get you from well, well back. That must look like it goes left to right, Cookie. I, I, 
was thinking it was a pretty straight putt. Yeah, after seeing uh, those last two, it, it's pretty flat up there. Ahead to the 17th, and now KJ Choi, second this, shot. This is exactly what we were just talking about. KJ's not nearly as long as Sutherland, and he went down the left side into the rough, and now he's got the pine tree and the palm trees are all a problem. I, he might be able to wiggle it through there, kind of flight it down just a little bit, wiggle it through those trees and land it on the front and run it back. We'll see. All kinds of danger up there. There's not much of a an alleyway or a runway to get it scooting up the front of the green. You got red penalty area to the right. We lost a huge pine tree right of the one you see there. Really protected this left side. That was a key tree, wasn't it? Kurt. Yeah. Now oh, this is well done. Yeah. Very well done. Threaded the needle. Gives him a good, good look at birdie right there. It hasn't been many good looks at birdie at 17 last part of the day. The wind kind of switched and came back more into him out of the left. Now Kevin Sutherland's second, Kurt. Johnny's got 131 yards, and if there's ever a time to be 100% committed to the shot you're trying to play, it's right here because if you want to get it close, you have to aim just left of it. Maybe the wind drifts it a little bit right, but you have to catch it solid and be totally committed that you have the right club here. This is a great look from behind Kevin Sutherland. You see the that sign back there and that tall pine, palm tree. Well, this is on a good line. How about this golf he's playing? That is serious confidence right there. We walk up with Kevin Sutherland in control of his golf ball and control of his golf game. Four shot lead. Here's a par putt now at 16 for Brant Job. Mm. That went all the way across the hole, so it's not a Good bogey on this hole at all after that tee shot. Tee shot was perfect. Marco Mira, speaking of the Masters, for birdie at 18. Get it there. Yes, just leaked it in. Good putt there by M.O. I don't think he's playing next week, Cook. He's just going in for the dinner. He is going in for the dinner and not playing. He said that uh, the golf course is outrun him. <laughs> and... Back to the 17 and Kevin Sutherland for birdie. The little uphill might move right at the end. Just didn't hit it, John. No, he kind of. Yeah, you kind of saw him just kind of flame out just a little bit. And back on the tee, Mark Brooks has to keep it down the right hand side. Does not have the length to get it past the, the trees on the left. And that's up the left center. We'll have to wait and see if he got it far enough. Did Tiger announce his champion's dinner menu? Did I miss that? I haven't seen anything on I it. I believe he has. I, I, I know that it's going to be, I believe, steak and sushi and some other stuff that's not appealing to some of the past champions, but <laughs> it sounds good to me. Brent Job now tee shot after that missed putt there at 16. Sure, if that caught the bow, it just got in the bunker, maybe. Not sure where that went. At least he's still smiling. I wouldn't be smiling at three putt and 16. And now up on the green, Dickie Pride for birdie. Well, he hit a, a heck of a second shot in here with a seven iron and you know, challenged that water on the right and can't quite pay it off coming off a bogey at 16. He just hit it through the break there, Kurt. Looked like it was on line, but now a good four feet by. Beautiful shot from high above, Phoenix Country Club. Kevin who plays the 18th. And they're waving it down the middle. Oh, got out of the bunker. Pretty good strike right there, and it hit in the bunker, and as Kurt said, it just comes right out. So good shot there. Ends up being a great shot by Sutherland. 
That was a member's kick. I thought Kurt Byron was the member here. Kurt and I are both are members here. So he got the good kick, though. KJ. Yeah, good swing for him here. Kind of cut it up against the breeze. It did turn over at the end. And we got some cart pathage. Yeah, he's, he's not going to be able to knock it on in two anyway, so he'll lay it up. Ball comes to rest right on the edge of the path up against the grass. To 17. Good look from behind the green there at 17. Looking down the fairway. See what presents these players. Looks like Paul Goidos will be ready to play. Paul started the day seven under par and birdie at the first and has made three bogeys since. Likes to work the ball left to right, so he'll aim at the tallest palm tree and just let the ball feed back to the right. Gaff needs to get up. That's a pretty steep slope right there, and it will find the aquatic penalty area to the right. If it was further up, the slope is not quite as steep, but right there is the steepest part of that slope. Yeah. Nothing to stop it from going in the water. Rancho's tee shot did find the bunker. Going back more into the wind. So that face right there might present a little bit of a problem. It's only going to have about 150 yards, but this ball has to get up in the air, and if it balloons at all, this could be a problem. Has to go left. Like a good strike. Comes up just short. Looked like a good strike, but he said he chunked it. And that result would say that he was more accurate than I was. 1972. Think this about that. There we go. This is Shane Birch on the other side of the temporary fencing there, the 18th, and that is predictably short. That's over near the 10th fairway where he hit his second shot at 18. And he was not going to mess around with that aquatic penalty area. Back to 17. We see Paul Goidos now taking his drop. Second shot did find the red penalty area to the right. Paul had a nice start to the day and has not gone his way the rest of the day. Couple bogeys and now he's in a world of trouble. Grant Job will play first. From short of the green, saw his second shot come up short out of that fairway bunker. We've seen him chunk a couple of bunker shots, fairway bunker shots. One yesterday, one today, which tells me that his lower body is not stable and his body is moving much too much in the lower part. Gotta have that stable lower body to hit fairway bunker shots. Well, this one's gonna have to go harder and to the right. Played so well yesterday. Not the same Grant Job today. So back to 18. Birch now with his fourth shot. Pretty simple little bunker shot right here. Just dump it out, let it run, and ooh, thought he had it. Flagstick may have kept that from going in. Almost got his birdie. Two over today, Birch, at this par 71 layout. And back to the 17th now, and Paul Goidos, his fourth. Going up a pretty steep slope. 
plenty of green to work with. Just depends on the lie and the catch. Look like that road up the face of the club can get sticky in the ryegrass. Yeah, not Paul's day right here. Fellow Virginia Country Club member back in Long Beach, California. Take another look right here, and Goidos does not catch that well. Didn't he'd like to have landed it about where the ball is now? Just a miss hit there by Paul. And then sometimes nope. that bright grass gets a little bit sticky, and, and if you have any D cell. Yeah, it does. And normally he's a very good chipper pitcher of the ball. Seen him chip many in. He's got nice motion on those pitch shots. Pretty much of a descending blow, and you would think he'd catch it high on the club doing that. Back at the 18th, you saw K.J. Choi's tee shot going left over the cart path. He's ready for his second. Well, I was wrong about the layup. He's going to give it a go. He's got 218 front, 229 to the hole. You can see he dropped it in a very good lie. So I think that made his decision a little bit easier. But it's still the same problem. The wind howling from the right. You've got the penalty area short and right of the green. I mean, to get it on the green, you have to start it right at the flagstick. Bunkers. Short left bunker would be a good lead if you miss it. He's on a good line. I just don't know if it's going to quite get there. No, I, 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 I think that was a bad decision out of the rough. It almost hopped out. That golf ball seemed to bounce off the surface of the water, but it did drop back into the penalty area. Yeah, the water, it, it, it really kind of juts out right there in front. So it's... It's got that one little area, and you really can't see it from at your second shot. Sutherland decided he wanted nothing to do with going for the green. He just chipped a little eight iron down the fairway. Wow. He well, only he, had 225 to the hole, but I just he I don't think he could figure out a place to leave it. Front left bunker would have been a nice place there. It would have been easy. <laughs> no you know, I mean, as good an iron player as he is, I'm kind of surprised, but also is... He's played some beautiful little wedges today, so maybe he's got a lot of confidence in that part of his game right now. Love the one he played at 16 today. That was that was just gorgeous. Great rotation through the upper body, which he has to have when you've got play it with the blade as shut as he does. Really hits a lot of high quality shots. Fifty six years old, born in Sacramento, went to school at Fresno State. Took him a while to win out here at Witt, but then he won twice last year and mm -hmm. played very well. Plays a lot of good rounds of golf out here. And back to the 17th now. Brent Joe for par. Pretty quick putt, a lot of left to right break, and that was a beautiful effort right there. After that little bobble at 16. Yeah, that's what I that's how I'd be feeling. This last group just the rounds today just kind of got away from them. Kevin Sutherland going low, other players going low. Sometimes that the synergy in that last group if everybody's not on the same page can uh, can leave in a hurry on a difficult day. Now back down to the 18th, Sutherland, after laying up from 225 yards, going to test his wedge game here. Well, it's just a basically a full sand wedge for him. I, he laid it up. He, he tried to hit a shot down here where he could get the yardage that he wanted with that lake short right. You know, if you try to push it down there and make a mistake, you just you feel stupid. So. Just kind of a full sandwich, three-quarter sandwich, I would say. The grain on the front of this green actually grows towards the back of the green. You can land it a little short. It should take a hop towards the pin and then spin. Okay, watch right here and see if he maintains his rotation well. Let's see what he does. Looked pretty good. Looks really good. There you go. 
Maybe that's why he elected to lay up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> knew his game, Kurt. He knew his game. Man, that was a lot better than the putt he hit on 17. I had a better chance of going in. And let's take a look at the contact right here. And talk about pure. He's making great contact right here. Good strike. And then you don't really see the rotation. But the chest rotation here is what holds that on line. And watch, you watch his upper body. It just rotates beautifully through that shot. That's what keeps that club face square and really well. For Kevin Sutherland, almost hold his third shot. Decided to lay up from 225 yards, give himself a full sand wedge. And that was the result. Frankly, surprised it didn't go in. I tell you what, 64 today, Whit. I did not see that coming with this these conditions today. Cookie and I were just talking three, four under, maybe, but seven. That is some round of golf by Kevin Sutherland. With that steady wind blowing across this golf course all day long and actually picking up in intensity. As the temperature dropped in the afternoon, Sutherland was undeterred. 64, the low round of the day at the Charles Schwab Cup Championship, an event that he won back in 2017. 